right, guys. So this is skill three, ATC. It stands for activating events, thoughts, and consequences. So ATC is to identify your thoughts about an activating event and the consequences of those thoughts. Um, ATC is one of the first skills taught because it's a foundational skill, and the following skills are built upon it. As you can see, ATC is represented by a little thought cloud because we're diving into your thoughts. ATC block, the bottom line up front. ATC builds self-awareness, and this is because ATC gives us a greater control over our, our emotions and reactions. Our thoughts are the area over which we have the most control. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the ATC model based on work by Albert Ellis. First, we have the activating event. The keyword is trigger. It's a challenge, adversity, or even a positive event. Uh, activating event is the who, what, when, and where. It can be a large adversity, such as death of someone you care about, or minor issue like a parking ticket. Activating events can be positive as well, such as getting a promotion or having a baby. Next, we have the thoughts. The thoughts are our heat of the moment, Thoughts, what we say to ourselves immediately follow it, following an activating event. The thoughts drive immediate reactions and can be productive or counterproductive. These thoughts lead to consequences, often referred to as C's, which you will see on some of your assignments. So when you see C's, um, literally the letter C with the S following it, it's referring to the consequences, which are emotions and reactions, E-R. It's what we feel and do in reaction to our thoughts about the activating event. Um, the emotions are feelings and reactions are behaviors. Uh, reactions can be what you do and what you don't do, such as avoiding a person or situation. So although it often feels like our emotions and reactions, the consequences, are driven by the situation itself, which would be the activating event. Our consequences, in fact, are driven by what we say to ourselves about the activating event or our thoughts. We can build self-awareness and ultimately self-regulation by slowing the process down and separating what happened, the activating event, from what we said to ourselves about it, thoughts, from our emotions and reactions, the consequences. Our thoughts drive our emotions and reactions. Before an activating event, you can figure out what you, uh, what you want to think so that you can have emotions and reactions that are the most productive. In the moment, you can change your thoughts to change your emotions and reactions. You can also reflect on your thoughts later to understand why you felt and reacted the way you did. So like mentioned before, thoughts drive consequences. So here we have an example of an ATC. The activating event is fighting with someone you care about. From that activating event, you have your thoughts, which is she never listens to what I have to say. From this thought, what do you think some of the consequences might be? Our emotions and reactions. Some of the emotions might be frustrated, irritated, feeling angry, what would the reactions be from, from feeling these emotions? Some might be something simple like balling up your fists or screaming, yelling, lashing out. What about storming out of the room, slamming a door? Some reactions are involuntary. So especially with feeling irritated and frustrated, sometimes our face might turn red or our heartbeat increases, our heart rate. So remember, thoughts of trespass lead to feelings of anger and frustration. So there, there's this pattern of ER that we're going to take a look at in a second. Remember that the consequences ER are driven by what this, this person said to themselves in the heat of the moment. So activating events. Not now, but when you get to your assignment, this is what you're going to be working on. 
we all have situations that we handle differently um, and have different outcomes. So through your assignment, you'll see where you're going to read through a list of situations and rate how effectively you handle them. And from the situations that you rated yourself low on, you're going to write a few recent vivid and meaningful activating events involving these situations. So this page is directly from the MRT schoolhouse. So at this time, we would talk about and reflect on some of the activating events you scored low on, but you'll see this in your assignment later um, to talk about what you learned from and record critical points and examples of the situations that you handle effectively or not effectively. So let's talk about emotions. Like defined before, emotions are feelings that are usually accompany, accompanied by physiological and behavioral changes in the body. Some are voluntary, some are involuntary. Common example of emotions, as you see, are anger, happiness, fear, love, etc. An important note for MRT lingo, uh, the words feelings and emotions are used very interchangeably. So with identifying emotions, PRACAP, obviously we aren't together in a group, so we will be skipping this, but you'll see something similar to this in your assignment. And again, you'll be going over the debrief of emotions in your assignment, but I want to point out um, some of the key concepts of this. When you're going through this exercise or assignment, you may find that some emotion words are similar, but some describe important distinctions in focus or intensity such as furious versus mad. Uh, sometimes it may be harder to come up with positive emotion words more than negative because of that ne excuse me, negativity bias that we have mentioned previously, um, which is the tendency for us to focus more on the negative than the positive. Understanding your own vocabulary for emotions is a very important self-awareness tool. And understanding that other people who have a different vocabulary for emotions can help build empathy and connection. Sometimes thoughts get mixed in with our emotions, such as, I feel like an idiot, I feel like he needed to be taught a lesson, which will follow anger or maybe sadness or disappointment. Um, but the good thing about ATC is the skill of ATC it helps us build that uh, ability to separate thoughts from emotions. Okay, so let's take a look at benefits of positive emotions. So some of the positive emotions you can see are increased creative thinking, undo the physiological effects of negative emotion. There's no value to negative emotions, including signaling danger and prompting us to make a change. Positive emotions are critical in building resilience. Some positive emotions help uh, increase and build creativity because they encourage out-of-the-box thinking, while negative emotions narrow our thinking. Using positive emotions, such as, let's say, gratitude or humor, can act as a protective buffer during difficult times because it makes people feel good and helps the body to repair from the negative effects of negative emotion, i.e., laughing returns heart rate to baseline faster. So the big takeaway is just knowing that positive emotions are critical, very critical in building resilience. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at thought consequence connections. What that means is basically this chart gives a thought theme and the corresponding emotion and reaction. A thought is where what you say to yourself in the heat of the moment. And the thought theme is a more general category that summarizes the meaning or category of that specific thought. So we're gonna move horizontally going through this chart. So the thought theme of loss. This is gonna be something that you value is gone. And the emotion reaction, which I'm gonna start referring to as ER, is sadness and withdrawal. For danger, there's something unknown or unclear. ER, anxiety, agitation. Trespass, you've been slighted or someone has violated your rights. ER, anger, 
or aggression. Inflicting harm. The thought theme would be, I have hurt someone, I'm at fault, or I have let someone down. ER for this is guilt and apologizing. Negative comparison. I'm not good enough or I'm unworthy. ER would be embarrassment or hiding. Positive contribution. You add value. The ER for this would be pride, sharing, or planning future achievements. Appreciating what you have received. This thought thing would look like I have been given something important. ER for this would be gratitude, giving back, paying forward. And positive future. Things will improve or there's a light at the end of the tunnel. This ER would be hope, energizing, or taking action. The next slide will continue with more uh, thought themes and ER patterns, but there, there are common patterns and thoughts and consequences that follow from those thoughts. This chart isn't uh, meant to suggest that these connections always hold true, but most of the time they do. You should use this chart as an empathy tool and for understanding your own patterns. If you believe that you overexperience a certain emotion, you can identify the pattern in your thoughts that is driving that consequence by taking a look at this chart. So here are some of the examples of what thought themes look like. And from those thoughts, you have your respective emotions and reactions. So for this specific example, we're using a soldier finding out about his first deployment. So let's take a look at some of his thought themes um, and emotions reactions. So with him finding about his first deployment, loss. I'm not going to be able to spend time with my family. I will miss them. His ER is he feels down. It's been a long time alone in his room. With danger, I'm going to die. His ER is scared, pacing. Let's jump down to positive contribution. I will be there for my battle buddies. His ER is he feels proud. Discuss with the chain of command where to start to get ready to go. And lastly, positive future. When I get home, I'll reconnect with my family and will enjoy making up the lost time. ER for that thought, he's hopeful. He's training to be the best of his ability. So with this example, we see how the different thoughts a person has about an activating event, an AE, which may explain how they can have multiple emotions and reactions to that same AE. In this example, the person used his own words. You know, it's, it's really important when you're going through this that you identify your own thoughts and that you use your own words and not just a general thought theme or statements on this chart. So example, a trespass thought might be, how dare she cut me off? Or that person just disrespect me. Make it your own. This chart also helps us understand how different people can experience similar AEs, like getting news of a first deployment, and have very different emotions and reactions to that AE. Different emotions and reactions are driven by different thoughts. So again, this, this example is just to show you how there can be a variety of ERs to the same e AE, which shows that our thoughts that drive our consequences. Okay, so thought consequence connections. Some people find that there's a pattern in their thoughts that they relate to a certain theme. You may notice patterns in your thoughts which can help you understand why you react a set in a set way across a range of events. So think about it. Do you over experience a certain emotion or reaction and reflect on is there a pattern in your thoughts that's driving that ER? Why do we have a picture of glasses? The glasses is for you to 
ask yourself and think, how does wearing glasses undercut resilience? And by all means, this is not biased against anyone who wears glasses. It's symbolic. Well, the answer is, the symbolism with this is, overly rigid patterns in thinking can undercut resilience because they may prevent us from seeing a situation accurately. Hence the glasses. You're wearing a lens that represents the overly rigid patterns in your thinking, which will undercut resilience. We're gonna use an ATC example to show how each part of the model influences all the other parts of the model. We're gonna to get to do this twice, one through your assignment, and the second time is we're gonna walk through this after you watch a short video. But first, I just want you to remember that ATC's system is dynamic. Remember that thoughts drive consequences, ER, which can affect future thoughts and create new activating events. Our thoughts lead to consequences, which can sometimes then reinforce those thoughts. So before we watch the video real quick, just reviewing what's the goal of ATC. It's to separate the AE, our thoughts about the AE, and then the consequences, ER, and to identify patterns in our thinking that make us weaker or decrease performance. Remember that ATC is not a problem-solving skill, but rather a skill to build self-awareness. And you can always increase the MRT competency of self-awareness by using the ATC model. Okay, so at this time, I want you to press pause on this video and go watch the clip called Father Son under ATC on the Google Classrooms. Okay, so now that we've watched the video, we're going to take that video as an example and work through an ATC practical exercise on the next following slide. We're gonna focus on one activating event from that video and then review the father's ATC heat of the moment thoughts and consequences, ER, and check that he labeled the thought theme correctly and review his answer to this question. Are my emotions and reactions helping or harming? Okay, so let's break down the ATC for the father. I'm sure that there were a number of possible AEs that y'all saw in the clip, but we're only gonna focus on one for the time being. Um, in real life, there are often multiple AEs in a given situation, but part of the skill of ATC is being able to freeze frame one moment at a time to catch our thoughts and consequences. So the AE we're gonna use is I asked my son to play basketball after returning from deployment. He said no. Now, remember that the AE is just the facts. There aren't any thoughts or consequences, emotions thrown into that. It's just the who, what, when, where. So from this AE, his thought, he did the moment thought, is my son doesn't want to be with me. The following ER is he feels bummed. His reaction is, shook his head, left the room, and he started drinking. Remember that your heat of the moment thoughts are uncensored, and that's okay. We want you to be raw and honest. There's no emotions in these thought boxes. His next heat of the moment thought, or excuse me, go back. His thought theme for this would be loss. Does his thought theme line up, meaning does that thought theme of loss match up with his ER. Yeah, it does. Remember, loss is something that you value as gone, and the ER, corresponding ER, is sadness and withdrawal. Here, he feels bummed. So it lines up. The next heat of the moment thought, he's an ungrateful brat. ER for this. Emotion ticked off. Reaction yelled at son. What do you think the thought theme for this will be? Trespass. Remember, trespass is I've been slighted. Someone has violated my rights. And the ER for that is anger, aggression. Yep, he's ticked off, so therefore trespass. Now, sometimes we may have to work backwards from the consequences to figure out the heat of the moment thought. 
So for example, the father may have only been aware of his anger and yelling, but not aware of the why. He's not aware of that heat of the moment thought. So we can fill in his reaction, yelled at son first, and then move, work backwards to figure out what heat of the moment thought led to that emotion of anger and then the reaction of yelling. The thought themes reflect the meaning of the heat of the moment thought and that they explain the consequences, the ER. Some of you may wonder, why is this thought theme so important? Well, like I said in the beginning, ATC is the first skill we teach because other skills build off of it. And unfortunately, we won't get to go over icebergs, but iceberg is a skill that builds off this model when the thought theme doesn't match the corresponding ER. And like I said, it doesn't hold true 100% of the time, but for the, for the most part, it does. And when you have a disconnect between the thought theme and ER, you've hit what we call an iceberg, which is a core value or belief that you hold true to yourself inside and may not necessarily be aware of that. And so the detecting iceberg skills help us break down and uh, uncover that mismatch. So the last question, are my emotions and reactions helping or harming? And you'll be answering this question as well when you do your assignment. The answer is, my emotions and reactions are harming me in this situation. I'm not effectively dealing with my anger or sadness by yelling at my son and leaving the room. And my emotions and reactions are getting in my way of having time with my son, which is exactly what I want. So the skill takes a lot of gut to be honest with yourself and call yourself out for having issues with your anger or sadness and then getting in the way with you being able to effectively deal with the situation. So that's why it's a self-awareness target of the skill. Um, it's a lot of self-reflection and it digs deep. So here are the key principles of ATC. If you have any questions, or comments, please do not hesitate to reach out to me after this video. Uh, remember that the more you practice the ATC model, the more you'll become aware of patterns in your thinking reactions that are counterproductive. And it's okay to be skeptical. I want you to be skeptical. Just because you thought it doesn't make it true. So how can we use ATC to enhance your performance? Like mentioned before, it's a self-awareness skill. It's self-awareness about patterns in your thinking, which is important to your effectiveness and well-being, which affects our performance overall. How can we use ATC to build stronger relationships? Well, ATC helps people to slow down when their thoughts generate counterproductive, counterproductive emotions or reactions, which therefore it can be used when counseling a soldier, a family member, a civilian, really anyone with the aim of helping that person understand why he or she is feeling or reacting in a particular way. Let's check on learning. What's the skill? When do you use it? And how do you use it? Remember, you don't want to be tuned in to your internal radio station all the time. ATC can be useful when your emotions and reactions are counterproductive or you find yourself wearing that one set of glasses. Have any questions? Reach out. If not, go ahead and begin that assignment under ATC.